Good morning everyone and welcome to our service. Let's open in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for our lives and the many blessings you freely give to us. As we focus on the concept of faith this morning, I pray that you will open up our minds to an understanding of the truth in your word. Open hearts to receive that truth and give us a desire to apply those truths to our lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So our reading this morning is taken from Romans chapter 4, verses 17 to 25. And Paul was writing to the church in Rome. And in these verses, he explains how Abraham was justified by faith. So verse 17 starts off and says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Against all hope, Abraham, in hope, believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it has been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to, to him as righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness for those who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. So today I'd like to talk about the concept in the Bible that has probably caused more confusion and controversy in Christian circles than any other, and that is the concept of faith. This controversy is a result of the scriptures being taken out of, con out of context, causing misinterpretation and misunderstanding. And here's a simple rule for us to remember and apply. The Bible read out of context becomes a pretext. In other words, a sentence in the Bible can be made to mean anything that we want it to mean unless we read it and study it within the framework of the entire passage to which that sentence relates. What then does the Bible in context say about faith? Hebrews 11.1 1 defines faith as being confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. The word faith in the Bible isn't an empty hope for something that may or may not occur. Nor is it a simple confession of something we want to be true. Faith is recognizing something that is already in reality despite the fact that we can't see it. The reading this morning relates to the story of a promise that God gave to Abraham. That even though he was a hundred years old and Sarah's womb was dead, they would still have a son. The Bible tells us that even knowing the impossibility of having a baby, Abraham's faith was not weakened. It says, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Romans 4, 17 says Adam had faith in God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. So based on this verse and other verses in the Bible taken out of context, some people believe that whatever they want, they can speak into existence. So we need to read Romans 4, 17 again. It doesn't say that Abraham called or spoke Isaac into existence. It was God who spoke Isaac into existence. Abraham simply believed God, acted on God's promise, and as a result, Isaac was born. The point I'm trying to make here is that our faith must be in God, not in our faith. In and of itself, faith has no creative power. It just affirms what already exists in the unseen world and in what God has promised, knowing 
that in his time it will come to pass, if it is God's will. Whether we, whatever we believe by faith must be based on what God has clearly promised in his word. And that is how we develop our faith. It's in God's word. By reading, studying and understanding God's word in context. Romans 10.17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Perhaps we need to be reminded that Jesus did not come to earth to give us health, wealth and happiness now in our lifetime. He came to save us from our sins so that we can have an eternity of bliss with him in heaven. Following Christ is not a ticket to all material things men desire, but a ticket to eternal life. Our desire should not be to have our best life now, but to have the attitude of Apostle Paul who had learned to be content in whatever state I am. That's in Philippians 4 verse 11. If we focus on ourselves and what God can do for us, then may I suggest, as Christians, we have missed God's purpose for our lives. Doesn't he say, go and make disciples of all nations? Surely leading our friends, our family, our loved ones, and even strangers into relationship with Jesus Christ must be the main objective of our lives. Believing that in faith, we can create our own reality and get everything we asked for. Believing that illness, sin and failure are the result of a lack of faith. Believing that God wants to bless us with health, wealth and happiness, but cannot do so unless we have enough faith, is, tant is tantamount to taking away trust in a holy and sovereign God and granting ourselves that power to operate independently of God's will and thereby even making God himself subject to our will. This infers that God is no longer in control, we are. And that is a dangerous teaching. But you know what? It's not new. We come across it in the first book of the Bible. Imagine that. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. The great deceiver says to Adam and Eve as he tends them to eat from the forbidden tree, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. Sadly, those who buy into the word of faith teaching are still being deceived today. Our hope is in the Lord, not in our own words, not even in our own faith. Our faith comes from God in the first place and it's not something we create for ourselves. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. And Hebrews 12 too tells us fix, to fix our eyes upon Jesus. The pioneer and the perfecter of faith. The Bible tells us that God created the heavens and the earth. Imagine that. He created the heavens and the earth. Our universe the milky way is made up of billions of stars the scientists tell us it'll take a hundred million light years to get from one side to the other we know how great our god is how can we or anyone be accused of having a lack of faith in believing that god can heal someone here on earth or give us blessings here on earth but yet we can believe that he created this incredible universe it is God who determines all things, whenever and on whomever He chooses. In other words, in His time and in His will. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Let us pray. Lord, You are sovereign over all things. In You and in nothing else do we put our faith. In Your mercy we pray forgiveness for the things we say and do and even think that bring dishonor to you. We are all sinners who fall short of your glory. Keep us humble and thankful, trusting and dependent only in you for all things, in your time, in your way, and in your will. Amen.